Hi, you're listening to Book Chat with author Vivian E. Moore. Welcome, everybody, to this week's episode. We really appreciate you joining us. This podcast really shows us how we can all learn, live, and thrive off of each other. By sharing our knowledge through our conversations, we will impart some knowledge whilst learning ourselves how to progress even further. Here is your host. Hello, and welcome to Book Chat. I am your host, Dr. Vivian e. Moore. I hope everyone had a great week. I hope you're having a great weekend. Um, it's a long weekend. We get three days. Uh, we have Memorial Day coming up on Monday, and we all know what this day uh, of tribute is for. So let's not forget uh, the reason for this season. Um, and I thank you again for tuning in uh, to the show live and um, for being dedicated, being a dedicated listener and, uh, you know, downloading the show and, and listening, that means so much to me because when you download it, that means you are listening to the show. And to me, that's more valuable than likes. So thank you so very much. So, um, I don't want to hold you for too long. So we're going to get right to today's show. Uh, the title of today's show is no admission allowed. And the topic is how to deal with manuscript rejection. As an author, I understand uh, the frustration of when your manuscript, um, one that's gained uncountable hours, fatigue, and months hunkered down for um, to only have it passed over. Listen, don't despair. Rejection isn't the end of the world. It may seem that way, but it's not. In the publishing world today, there are many avenue, avenues to display, or should I say in the publishing business today, there are many avenues to display um, excellent work and you can obtain justification for a job well done. It doesn't stop there uh, with that manuscript um, rejection. And as a matter of fact, it should spur you onward um, to, to better things. You know, if face... Um, with one closed door, don't hesitate to move on to the next. It could be the way in for an eager writer. Simply because one's book wasn't the right fit for a particular publisher doesn't mean they should stop and just give up either. The truth is the majority of publishers focus on agent uh, authors first because it signifies the manuscript is sellable, promotable, and profitable. Most importantly, it brokers a relationship for future book deals. Now, there are plenty of publishers who are feverishly uh, in search of fresh new talent and are willing to give unagented authors a chance to showcase their work. Still, <laughs> the same demands that dictates who gets chosen and who doesn't are still in place. So for all serious writers who desire to become published authors, make sure to complete all the requirements. Um, you know, it's one thing to, to perhaps write a good book, but then if the book is not edited properly, if it's sloppily done, those are some of the main things that they look at. And, and to be quite honest, um, you know, when they ask you to submit a synopsis, they're looking at the writing of that synopsis that tells them a lot about your writing style as to how you uh, pin that synopsis. So you might want to pay closer attention to that because it's equally as important as that actual manuscript that you want to submit to, uh, you know, whatever publisher that will um, accept your work. So, but I'll be the first to tell you that the demand for great writers is constant because this is such a, uh, such a fickle business and it is such a saturated business that, um, you know, there are new writers coming out, uh, seems like every hour, you know, on the hour, but let's face it because the world needs books, but they expect excellent writing too. So you need to make sure you have everything down pat before you submit it. And I understand the struggle it's very real. And, you know, some may feel that taking another route, 
self-publishing um, is the equivalent of bowing out gracefully, but it's not. Um, it's just a simplified approach to having one's publishing dream become a reality. Self-publishing is, is, is trending. And not to say that it's trendy, but it is trending. Um, it is something that more and more writers are looking into um, because it is a faster way, a more efficient way to get your work out there. And, you know, people, people are looking to cut the middleman out. Because they want, they don't want to have to share their profits. They don't want to get, you know, they do all the work and then they only get 30 or 40%, you know, of the profits. You may get 40% uh, for the, uh, for the eBooks. And then uh, you get what, maybe 30% uh, for the, um, for the paperback. And, you know, to me, if I'm doing all the work, you know, I feel like I should get most of the money too. Now I understand that there's a lot that goes into uh, publishing just one book. There's a lot of work, you know, because if, if you, if they don't suggest that you get the book edited first, you know, usually they have editors available that would do all of the work for you. And then you think about the promotion and all of those things. So that's why, um, you know, your cut of the profit seems low is because, you know, all these things are, are being done for you. And when you self publish, you are, you know, the CEO, the writer, everything, you're doing everything yourself. So, you know, it's on the front end. And, um, so you, you know, once you get those profits, you feel like you've earned them because you paid the price for that. So, um, it's just something to think about. But anyway, you know, for those who are still convinced that self-publishing is for losers, then they should read the success stories from a list of indie publishers who have gone on to become bestsellers. Or if they persist that traditional publishing is the only way, then my suggestion is that they up their submission game and power forward. You know, if one is fortunate enough to obtain the right agent, then let the agent do the shopping for the best publishing deal. But just know great agents aren't cheap <laughs> and they also require a list of criteria before they will even consider representing any potential client. So that's something to think about too. Also, be aware of agents who are too eager to have the client sign with them. You know, they should be vigilant and do their homework. If there's anything worse than rejection, it's being duped. There are so many people you would think that people would be, you know, reputable, you know, in all businesses. But then again, there are people out there that are, that's, that's their only vision. You know, that's, that's how they enterprise, um, is by duping people, by scamming folks, you know, into believing that, you know, that they're going to work for them and they get their money. And these days, you know, with everything that's going on, any hard earned dollar is, is something that you just don't want to give away. And you especially don't give it away. You don't want to give it away to someone, um, who's just waiting out there to take you. So just make sure you do your homework and be diligent in that as, as much as you are, uh, as being diligent in your, um, quest for, you know, for publishing success. Also, if you are out there looking for an agent, you need to make sure that you do your homework, Google them, you know, Google the agency. And, uh, you know, usually I get a list, um, of, from, um, publishers weekly, I think is what it is, or, or maybe authors weekly or whatever it is. I can't remember the name of it. But anyway, I get emails, uh, from them, um, maybe twice a week, you know, maybe once a week, however many times, I don't know, but still sometimes they have a list of, of, uh, agents who are seeking new clients and, uh, you know, they, and they can be first time authors. They can be new authors, um, you know, because they, they, they need the business as well. So if it's coming from that direction, you know, if it's coming, if it's printed in that magazine, in a reputable magazine, or, you know, a, 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 a reputable publishing guide, then I would most certainly recommend that you check out some of those, um, some of those agents that are out there. You know, there, there are a lot out there and, and you will find your right match. Um, if you, if you search hard enough, you will. All right. So, um, you know, manuscript rejection is not the end of the world or the end of any writing career regardless of what you may think or how you may feel. Our rejections aren't a sign of unworthiness. It merely means some areas areas require strengthening. 
constructive criticism. <laughs> it wasn't designed to uh, lower one's abilities either, but to help make them stronger. Now, I for one would rather know where my weaknesses exist so I can work to reinforce them. In the end, if an author is fortunate enough even to get a rejection letter, it means their work received some serious consideration. Plus, if it held pointers, uh, if it if it if it helped, if it had pointers on how to improve the story, they should feel honored that an editor took the time to make those comments. So remember, no admission one time doesn't set the standard for a future entry. All right, so I'm glad I had the chance to. Um, <laughs> to share that with you um, because you know I've had um, I've had my own publishing woes um, you know through the years but um, you know I decided that um, that that I set the standard for what I wanted you know um, and and I didn't feel um, shortchanged you know that um, that I took the, pu- the self-publishing route and for me, you know, that was the best fit because, um, you know, I've been on the, on the, on the top end of, of publishing and on the lower end of it. And, um, you know, but now I'm somewhere in the middle and that's a good place to be. It really is. So, um, just remember that and, uh, you know, continue to submit your manuscripts to, um, you know, to publishers who are willing to look at your work and, you know, and take, take, um, what they say. Um, you know, seriously, um, especially if, you know, if you even get a, like I said, if you even get a rejection letter from them, um, you want to read it, study it to see, you know, exactly where they're telling you to, you know, to build your strengths and and what to change because that's good advice. You know, that is very, um, profitable advice for you, um, to listen to, you know, to them critique your work because that's something they don't have to do. It could just go to the slush pile and you never hear from them again. So if you hear from them, that's a good thing. Even if you are rejected, it's still good. You know, if they give you a list of why they rejected your work. So, um, you know, just keep it on a positive end. All right. So, but before I let you go, I want to make sure that I give you these URLs. Of course, the first one is to my show, uh, is Spreaker, www.spreaker.com forward slash user forward slash author Vivian anymore. Um, you can also like me on all social media, Facebook, um, Instagram and Twitter and Instagram is by invitation only. Uh, also, if you want to check out my website, that is at, uh, uh, author Vivian anymore.com and also author eh shepherd.com. Um, and, uh, my blog site is, uh, HTTPS colon four slash four slash Vivian E more dot blogspot dot com. Uh, you can also, uh, listen to the show and download the episodes, uh, the recorded episodes, uh, from a course speaker, iTunes, Apple podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Castbox, Deezer, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, YouTube, and SoundCloud. So that is many different ways um, to connect with the um, with the show and download all of the episodes. Um, we will be celebrating the third year of um, Book Chat with Author Vivian anymore coming up in February, and I'm looking forward to that. And it would be nice if I could get to that 10,000 uh, listener mark. That would just be fabulous if I could do that. And if you would help me do that, I would greatly appreciate it. So um, if you will, uh, you know, go out there on iTunes and leave a review. Uh, and on all the other um, venues that I shared with you, uh, platforms that I shared with you, uh, be sure to do that on those also. Like the show and share it. I do appreciate it. And also tomorrow is uh, Worship Sunday. And I hope that you are planning to uh, attend church uh, from your home, regardless of what has been said uh, this pa- these past few days. Um, you know, if you don't feel it is safe to go out, you know, to worship to your church, then please stay at home because that's what I plan to do, um, you know, until the things get better, you know. But anyway, um, you know, invite your neighbors to, to listen in, you know, give them those, um, those uh, um, email addresses and, and uh, websites where they can uh, listen to the show, uh, listen to the uh, sermon electronically, or they can vis- visualize it. Um, some people do watch parties. 
um, and um, and show that and they show their um, their church on Facebook and, and other venues. So you want to tap into those as well, and uh, you know invite family members and also let children listen in on the sermons because that's very important uh, for kids that they hear uh, the word as well. And tell someone that you love them because tomorrow is not promised. Today may be the only chance you get to say that. So I love you. I hope you love me back. Until the next time you hear my voice, God bless you and goodbye. Loved what you've heard on this week's episode? Well, well, the answer is simple. It would mean the world to us if you could head over to iTunes and leave us a five-star review and feedback. Spreading the word really is the best way to grow our podcast and achieve even greater things. Thank you. Thank you.